Okay, ready when you are, Melissa, thanks. Okay, I'm ready. So we're going to do um, one of the large group activities, which is let's find out about it. And you can go ahead to the next slide. Um, and this happens usually two or three times a week. And it's all in the schedule for each week that's laid out. Um, so this is a whole group meeting that's approximately 10 minutes long, which provides students with additional information about specific concepts that have already been introduced to them during their read alouds and their center time. So through this, they are introduced to new vocabulary, information, and concepts. And then they can apply the knowledge and understanding that they gain during this time to enhance their learning the following day and the following days after in centers, in small groups, and in their group discussions. So honestly, the best way to learn about this component is to just look at some of the things the children will be learning. So we'll take a look at that through each unit. So in unit one, which is families, there are nine let's find out about it topics. And four of those topics include caring for babies, which connects to their read aloud cry baby. After you show those materials and let's find out about it, such as the baby bottle and all the tools we use to care for babies, you can then add those materials to dramatization and they can use them. And then also during this time, I may send home a note to asking for families to send in photos of children and their families um, or children as babies. Um, another topic is pets, which connects to Crybaby, where there is a dog and Peter's chair where there's Willie. And you can ask for photos of pets or children can bring in little stuffed animal pets and add those to dramatization. Um, there's also musical instruments, which connects to the read aloud Hello Goodbye Window. And during this, let's find out about it, children listen to a song by Tito Puente, and they hear a new story called Charlie Parker Played Bebop. And they will retell those stories, um, the story of Charlie Parker and all the sounds that are in that story over and over throughout the year. Um, and I, I also go into our music room and bring in percussion instruments and we explore those. And in some years, I've also used this time to make little homemade drums with them. Um, another topic for let's find out about it in this unit is how people get around, which connects to Peter's chair because he is walking from place to place. And we read a book called On the Go and we graph how the children got to school that day. In unit two, which is friends, there are 10 let's find out about it topics and four of those topics include farm to table and markets around the world, which connects to our read aloud little red hen makes a pizza. Um, possibly you could find a video on YouTube to share of you know how a tomato grows at the farm and becomes tomato sauce or even about different markets around the world and for all of the let's find out about it. Uh, topics. There are resources on the website. We can show you how to access those. You can print them out and laminate them so you have them every year. They're mostly photos that you can show the children. You could use videos you find on YouTube. Um, at the beginning of the year, I have all the resources printed out, but usually by the end of the year, I'm putting them up on the big screen I have in my classroom. Um, another topic is beautiful stuff. Oops, sorry, I'm just looking at the comment. Oh, she says the pictures and resources are awesome. <laughs> um, thank you. The beautiful stuff, which connects to Little Red Hen makes a pizza and letter to Amy. And these are some people call loose parts. So there's small recycled materials. You can send out a family letter asking for donations. I did it the first year and I still have so many of the donations that were sent in that I haven't done it since. But you can definitely reach out to your families to help um, do that. So you would introduce beautiful stuff and then you would add it to your manipulative center for sorting and counting um, or to your art center for creating. We do a barber shop in our dramatization center, but we introduce it in a book called Dandelion. And then we talk about it and let's find out about it. And the information from the discussion during this time helps you to build a barber shop with your children in the dramatization center. And then we also talk about celebrations. So um, 
you're talking about invitations and what celebrations are for and different celebrations they've had in their lives as you're leading up to the end of the unit where you will have a celebration. So unit three, wind and water. There are 12 Let's Find Out About It topics. And some of those include exploring what air moves and going through the scientific process. They are predicting and observing. We're recording our results. This carries into so many different activities in this unit. There's small group experiments and math graphing activities. You're learning about animal baby care and you're comparing that to the way that humans care for their babies. You're learning that living things need water and this is going to carry into unit six when you learn about things that grow and they're going to remember this. You know, plants need water and they'll remember, oh, well, living things need water and this plant is living. Um, so that's kind of a foundation of knowledge you're starting in unit three that you will see carry into all spring. Um, you're learning how animals prepare for winter. You're using words like shelter, food, migrate, hibernate, and you're learning about dressing for winter, which is an important social science skill, learning to dress and protect their bodies when they go outside. And then after this discussion, I usually put a dressing bear or some sort of activity in our manipulative center. So unit four, world of color. There are 11, let's find out about it topics, including maps. So now you're introducing map making. And then this is an activity that's going to continue to come up until the end of the year. They will be inspired to start making maps. And the way that those maps develop over time is really incredible. They become so much more detailed and they'll always want to make maps before they go outside for our nature walks. Um, we talk about color fading and experimenting with fading colorful paper. We talk about portraits as we prepare to create our own self-portraits. And we're looking at the ways that things are similar and different, not just things, but people too, that connects to our read aloud colors of us. So in unit five, shadows and reflections, you're looking at 12, let's find out about it topics. And some of those are reflections and noticing the differences between reflective and non-reflective items. You're looking at sources of light, natural light versus artificial light and where light comes from and why it's important to us. Um, you're looking at nocturnal and diurnal animals and you're definitely using those words with the children because they are so capable of understanding and using those complex vocabulary words. Um, you're looking at shadows, you're looking at opaque, transparent and translucent objects. And after one lesson, they're using those words they'll walk around and say, oh, that's transparent, or hey, that's translucent. And I hear from parents all the time, like, where did they learn this word? Well, right here, and let's find out about it. Um, and we also create a class graph or chart with that activity. And then we're also learning how light is helpful and referring back to the things we've learned about nocturnal and diurnal animals and light sources. And then finally, in unit six, things that grow, there are 11 different let's find out about it topics, including what seeds need to grow, which they learn about. And then in small groups, they're going to plant seeds and do, there's a lot of different seed growing experiments in unit six. Um, they're learning about oviparous animals, which are animals that lay eggs. They're learning about wheels and tires and bridges. And after we learn about bridges, I always add those materials to manipulatives so that they can experiment with building a bridge that is stable and can hold weight. We do life cycle drawings. We refer back to the butterfly life cycle, which we did in the fall, and then look at spring animals that they may be seeing out in their world. And then we're also looking at pre-K now. So we're thinking about our pre-K students and they're thinking about when they were babies and how they've grown throughout the years and they're getting ready to go to kindergarten. And then they're also researching kindergarten. So this year we sent a letter to the kindergarten teachers and asked them to tell us about kindergarten because we couldn't go visit. We just kind of stayed in our own pre-K world um, during our COVID year. And then they sent the letter back with a graph tracking and answering all their questions. Can't remember what slides next, Nicole. Let's look. Okay, so this is an example of what you will see when you go into the program on the website and you're looking at your Let's Find Out About It activity. 
So in the upper left-hand corner, it says unit four, week one, and then the title of the activity, let's find out about it, color fading. And then somebody amazing went through and put in all the standards that all of the activities meet. You'll find the materials needed for the activity. So for color fading, you will need Max's Dragon Shirt book so that you can reference it, colored construction paper cut into strips, tape, and then there's a procedure in one of the resources on the website. The vocabulary that you're focusing on is stain, fade, experiment, means to try something and predict. So you'll set up your materials for your preparation. And then there's the script here. And I'm a fan of the script. Even going into my fourth year for my read alouds, I still follow the script because then I don't even have to think about making sure I say the vocabulary or pull out the right things I wanna talk about in my comprehension asides. So I will follow the script. I usually write it on a piece of paper and stick it on the back of the book. So I can hold up the book and read the script and look like I'm not reading it. Um, so you'll talk about, you know, in Max's dragon shirt, Max spilled ice cream on his dragon shirt. What do you notice? And you give them time to respond. And then you'll say, Max's shirt was stained. You experimented with making and washing stains. What do you notice? And you give them time to respond. The stains disappeared or faded, becoming lighter in color. Washing with soap and water can fade stains. We will experiment with fading using these materials. So then you show the materials. Instead of washing washcloths, we will hang colored paper in the window. What do you predict will happen to the paper? And I do have a habit whenever I get to a vocabulary word of slowing down and really emphasizing it. It's, I don't know, it's a habit. So then you hang up the paper in the window and I don't know, I'm going into my fourth year and I'm still excited every year to see their reaction to the faded color paper. Um, I don't know if you want to show the video, Nicole, but I did make a note here that um, there is a teacher who has a video showing them checking on their experiment. I just realized I was muted. Um, I do think it's worth showing because um, it's this the video models this actual lesson um, checking in on their faded paper. But let's find out about it personally for me is one of my favorite components in this program and, and similarly in, in OWL as well. Um, it, it, it makes me chuckle because teachers, I always say, all teachers, not just pre-K, are like 90% educators and 10% actors and actresses, right? So in the early childhood world, sometimes you have to click into that 10% of your salesman pitch and really make something sound so fun and so amazing. I mean, in this particular lesson, color fading, we're talking about colored pieces of paper that have faded in the sun. So those words on paper and those words coming out of my mouth might not seem thrilling to adults, right? But for four-year-olds, listening to you describe, model, and show these words in action, it's like, it can be like riveting, right? Like Sarah said. Um, and, and the students truly do hang on every word you say, depending on how excited you're being or you're acting about this particular concept. Um, so one of my favorite ones that I've seen done, ever observed in a classroom is during wind and water when the let's find out about it lesson is talking about um, materials that repel or absorb water. And as an adult, I know that umbrellas repel water and I know that sponges absorb water. And that doesn't seem like it's that fun of a lesson really. But when you are doing it in front of a group of four-year-olds and five-year-olds and they're watching you model repellent materials and absorbent materials, they're just like, oh my gosh, I've never noticed that. But you know, and you start to see these connections being made um, that is so exciting. Um, I think it's so fun to watch the students um, during Let's Find Out About It lessons. And these are whole group, large group lessons. Um, you have all of your students that are present that day, part of this lesson. Um, and so it's really, really awesome to see them all 
you know, following directions, following your expectations and just like hanging on every word. Um, so I will pull up Megan's video. Um, many of you will recognize this teacher, um, but for efforts of maintaining some type of um, confidentiality, I'll just leave it with her name's Megan. Uh, okay, let me see if I can pull this up. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. Another really fun one that I've seen in the past is during wind and water when we're talking about wind and modeling um, with fans and, and hair dryers. The, the concept of wind inside the classroom is another really exciting one. Okay, so please flag me if you can't hear this. Okay, you can't hear it because I can't hear it. <laughs> Nicole, do you want us to try to open and share the video? Good morning. I would like to talk about our paper fading experiment that we did last week. Now we've been talking about fading. Remember in the beginning of Max's dragon shirt when we looked at his blue jeans and they were faded? So what we did is we cut strips of paper and we put them in our folders and we taped them to the windows. That was seven days ago. Now we're gonna check them today. We're gonna check the ones that say week one. The other folder we did was week three. So it's already been one week. So if I have three weeks and I take away one, in two weeks we'll check our other folders. We're gonna leave them up in the window until then. Now, we wanted to see if the sunlight would fade the paper on our construction paper. That was what we were testing. Now, before we checked out our strips, I want to make a prediction. Now, a prediction is a guess. It's what we think was going to happen to our paper strips. So I want you to raise a quiet hand and tell me what you think was going to happen to our paper strips if we left them in the sunlight. Hayden, what do you think was going to happen? Uh, I would think we would have to blow them off. What was going to blow them off? The sun. You think the sun would blow them off the, paper, the folder? Uh-huh. So let's put that. You think they're going to blow away? Hmm, I don't know if they're going to blow away. The wind makes things move, remember? There's no wind in our classroom. No, Madison, so what do you think the it sun was going to do? Fade it. Fade it? What does that mean? What's going to make the paper look like? The sun. The sun is going to do what? Fade what? Fade the, the paper strip. 
the paper strips. So their paper strips will be faded. So do you think the sun is going to make the color vibrant or dull? Dull. Dull. So I'm going to put that word dull. Raise, if you have something else to say, a prediction, raise a quiet hand. Ava? I think mine will fade right down to ice cream. <laughs> so you think that it's going to fade down to like the ice cream? Yeah. And ice cream? And I think it will be dullish color. A dullish color? I'm going to put a check mark because you agreed with Madison. Mason, what do you think was going to happen? All right, so I'm going to leave our guesses, our predictions up on the board, and I'm going to pass out your folder. Now, when you get your folder, what I want you to do is to take the strips out and investigate them. I want you to look at the colors. Madison, here's Tiffany, Caden's not here. Is Kendrick ready? Oh, I'll put Kendrick's on his seat when he's ready. And Duncan's playing with Mindy. Maria. Aurora's out. Aaliyah S. Um, Aaliyah P. Yes. Mason. Ava. Godric. Diedrich and Hayden. So I want you, I'm going to use Aurora's as an example. Aurora is not here. So what we're going to do, I want you to pull them up like this. Don't take them out. Just pull them up a little bit with your strips. You have three strips, so pull all three out a little bit. Can you make it look like mine? Look, I, 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 I now, that's okay, try again. Just pull it up with your fingers again. So, tell me what you see. What happened? What did the sun do? How about, I'm sorry, let's raise quiet hands so I can hear one at a time. If you want to share what happened to your paper, raise a quiet hand. Madison? Mine was too faded. So Madison, it did fade. If you look at your paper, the part that's on the bottom was protected by the light or by the folder. It was protected. You the sun did not see it. So if I you pull it up, you ready, Kendrick? You can right. tell the two different color two different colors. There's a light color on top because the sun faded it. This is non-color fast. That means the color faded. On the bottom, <coughs> it's darker. It's richer in color. It was protected. The sun didn't touch it. So this is color fast. It won't fade. I did all green. You did all green. So the different shades of color, Mason, have differences. So let's let's pull them all out. One, two, three. Put your folder right down. And I want you to hold your strips. Godric, can you do this? Pull your strips out. Thank you. And put your folder on the floor. Are you ready? When you're ready, you can come sit at your spot, please. Crisscross applesauce. Yes, yours. Can you pull yours out? Now I'm gonna borrow one of yours, please, Mason. I'll give it back. Thank you. And who has a light green strip? Ava, thank you. So one thing I want to point out, we have different shades of color. They're both green. One's a light green and one's a dark green. And if you look, the dark colors faded more than the light green. What about the red? Who has a red one? Who has a red strip? Raise your hand. Ava, can you tell us what happened to the red? The red faded a lot. 
You have lot that was faded, right? It was exposed to the sun. Who has a pink one? Pink. You have a pink one, Aaliyah. Did yours fade? Let's see. Oh, Aaliyah's faded. But that's really hard to see. It's not as easy to see as the dark green. So the darker the color, the more it fades. It's non-color fast. So I want you to take your three strips, please. And I want you to put the protected end back into the folder. So your dark color is going to go on the bottom. Nice listening, Godric. One, you have three pieces to slide in. Two, three. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to collect these folders and I'm going to keep them in a safe place. I'm going to put them in our cabinet, in our cupboard, so the light doesn't fade them anymore. And we're going to keep them and in two more weeks we're going to take our other folders down and see if the sun has changed those strips more or less than the week one. Hmm, I wonder what will happen. So I'm going to collect people who have pink strips. Can you please hold your pink strips up? I have pink strips. Thank you, Justin. riveting <laughs> yeah um i just love that video because i love how she's talking nice and slow with them the whole time um i like that she's constantly emphasizing the vocabulary and not even just vocabulary listed in the lesson plan but bringing back other vocabulary from that she's likely talked about in other components of her day like the word exposed that's not listed here but she used it a few times um, they clearly know the process and they were engaged the whole time, sitting nicely for the most part and just doing their thing. Um, I like that as they were saying words, she was writing it down with them so they could see her write from, you know, writing in the right direction and that letter and word formation. Um, I think I also wrote that I liked how she was giving them cues to use the vocabulary. So when the child couldn't quite find the word dull, she reminded them of it. Um, you know, well, do you mean this or dull? And then the child could latch onto that word and then used it a couple more times in her discussion. Um, mm -hmm. When I do that experiment, I just do one as the whole group. So don't feel like, oh, I need to go make 16 of these for one for each of my students. You might have time to do that. You might not. I just make one and hang out, hang those in the window that we look at as a whole group. Uh, yeah. Is that what you're going to say, Morgan? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. So that was large group. Let's find out about it. Are there any questions about, let's find out about it. Um, you can tap, you know, unmute yourselves and ask a question or just type it in the chat box. And then, oh, so when you look at the schedule, you'll see that there's a large group section in the schedule, and then it'll be listed, you know, let's find out about it on these days. And on one of the other days, there's a math activity. So we're going to talk about math right now. You can go on. I was just excited about adding slides, I guess. Um, so all the photos are, I believe, from my classroom and our math activities that they were either doing during center time from our puzzles and manipulative center or during our small groups. So as you can see, this is shape and color bingo. Um, so the overall goal of the math component of the program is to create a strong foundation for mathematical thinking and learning. And the program presents math concepts and skills in a way that is engaging, hands-on, 
developmentally appropriate for this age and sequential. So all of the skills are building on each other. Um, it integrates the main early learning development standards into all unit goals and objectives. So it's not necessarily a, okay, now it's time for math and we're going to do this math activity. A lot of the math activities and opportunities for math learning are integrated throughout all of the different activities throughout all of the units. So as the developers of this program, we're creating the activities, here are the assumptions in the approach for math learning that all children are natural mathematicians, that learning should be accessible for all learners, that being able to problem solve using mathematical thinking skills and tools is essential for school success, that experiential active learning is the basis for all learning activities, and that math is integrated into other learning within each of the units. So some of the things that are learned are all along the MELD's developmental pathways. They're exploring mathematical practices, counting and cardinality, numbers and operations, geometry, measurement and data, problem solving, and math communication. And this little girl in this activity is doing a measurement activity with the beans where she lays out the beans in the line and then counts how many beans long each of the lines is. And within the Pre-K for Me program, math skills are learned through hands-on learning, multi-sensory diverse experiences. It's purposefully integrated across the curriculum. There are whole group math activities during the, your large group time. There's small group math activities that you're doing in your small groups with them. And then there's the puzzles and manipulative center in the Pre-K classroom. And that's what this child's doing here. We, this is some of our beautiful stuff and loose parts that families donated to the program. And that was out in our manipulative center in a big bucket all together. And he took the whole center time to sort it. And then later he was creating designs with it. So um, we don't have any videos of math activities. And if we were together, we could set up centers for you to go around and explore all the different things. But instead we'll share some photos of math learning from our classrooms. So this is one that was not a structured activity. We had unifix cubes in our manipulative center and they were measuring the table. Um, so this is a small group activity called spin, count, and link. And so what they do is they spin the spinner to see which color and they roll the dice to see how many. So if they land on red, four, they would put four red links into the chain and then they just keep going and build a chain. You can count them, you can take them apart and sort them. Those links are great for fine motor and putting them together. If you don't have links, you can use unifix cubes. And in all the math activities, you will see that there's often, you know, the guiding math idea behind the activity and math concepts from the learning and how it's progressed to the activity that you're doing today. So this activity is called Bears, Dots, and Blocks. It's a small group activity. When we were done doing it in small groups, I put it in the manipulative center because they loved it so much. And essentially what they do is they take the blocks and they put that many blocks on, and then they're putting that many bears on as well and kind of strengthening those one-to-one -one correspondence skills and counting and numeral recognition. For some students who weren't quite ready, I may have only had a couple of the cards out. And then for other students, I would have more numerals out. Um, there's a lot of exploring measurement. And so for this small group, you're doing exploring measuring tools. It's a low support group. So you're offering the tools for them to explore with. And then later we did the activity again and I offered this, you know, what did you measure? And they could draw a picture or write about what they measured and how long was it? So apparently she measured Ms. Brown's arm and it was 20. Um, later during remote learning, she measured her dad's muscles. So that was exciting. 
I don't know if they were also 20. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and it looks like this is unit two, week two. So this is like November-ish. Yes. Um, so just, you know, drawing attention to, you know, this particular student's ability to draw Ms. Brown's arm <laughs> and smiling face, as well as uh, write the numerals two and zero to make 20. Um, I'm sure that there was a level of assistance provided, um, but it's something that, you know, is embedded throughout the whole curriculum. It wasn't that this was a lesson on how to write 20 um, or how to draw a person, but those concepts are included in this specific activity um, to represent this child's learning. So this is absolutely something that I would save as an assessment tool for later, because you're gonna have other examples throughout the course of the year of this particular child's ability to draw a person and to write numerals. So this is a great example of progression potentially. Yeah, definitely. And knowing this child, she likely didn't need help writing that number 20, um, but that doesn't mean that other children didn't. You know, you can make right. notes on the back of it, you know, what what would you, what did she excel at with this activity? What did she need support with? And kind of track that as you go. Uh, but there are definitely other children who probably did a scribble and was like, that's, you know, that's this number and that's okay too. But yes. Um, so this was a large group math activity, making sense of data. So throughout the week or even longer, you get to kind of choose how long you want to track all the different colors that you're wearing. Um, the children would come in and choose the color dot of a color they're wearing that day. And then you followed up with this large group activity in which you really looked at this graph together and made sense of what it says. You know, what colors did we wear the most, the least? You can track that, you can just talk about it. Um, and all of that is outlined in the lesson plans for math, so you don't have to necessarily come up with it on your own. Um, it looks like they tracked their colors for a week, and then this is actually Jessie's class, and then she probably sat down with them at the end of the week and did this large group activity. Um, another graphing activity in probably unit one, because it's families, is how many people are in your family and you're just sitting down and graphing with them. There's a lot of graphing and chart making throughout the whole program. And even chart making, ne not necessarily, you know, you're going to talk about pets and it doesn't necessarily say, and make a chart or make a graph, but other opportunities where you as a teacher can say, hey, let's make another graph or a chart or tally marks or representing numbers and mathematical knowledge in a number of different ways with the children. Perfect. Um, so one thing about the math piece to pre in pre-K for me, it's truly embedded through in every component. So while there are math specific lesson plans and objectives for small groups and large groups, it's also very present in centers and it's very present in the read aloud and it's very present in Swipple and Swiplin. Um, it's very present when you line up to leave the classroom. It's present when you're outdoors at recess, when you're sitting down for snack or eating a meal with your students. Math plays a role throughout your entire day. So being aware of your unit of study that you're currently in and what the math lessons are sort of focused on throughout that unit will give you a really great leg up on what to focus on during those other times of your day when you're interacting with students. Um, so if you're talking about graphing like this, then you might create a graph when you line up to go outside. Let's have all the girls line up here and all the boys line up here and then compare. All kids with sneakers here, all kids with flip flops here and compare, right? So there's opportunities beyond just the specific lesson plans to incorporate these concepts um, throughout the whole day. The other thing I wanted to add to, um, we had mentioned early on yesterday that some programs or some classrooms tend to supplement their math with another purchase program like Building Blocks, Everyday Math, Eureka Math, you name it. Um, and that's possible, it's just, an, it's not necessary because it's embedded this way. The teachers that we had um, working with us when we were developing Pre-K for Me that wrote the math pieces. Um, one of them specifically is, was, and, and still is a pre-K teacher in our state. And she's incredibly collaborative. 
So if at any point during pre-K for me, if you're not confident in your own math instruction skills, if you're not sure about a particular math lesson or why it's there or where it is, then ask. Um, if I don't know the answer or if our teachers here aren't confident in responding, then I would address or I would um, connect you with the teacher that helped us write this because she truly is the expert and could speak very fluently behind all of these pieces. Um, although she's a pre-K teacher, she has a really strong math background um, and is available to answer any questions, of course, when she's not directly in the classroom with her students. The other piece I wanted to add to is that at the department, we have early childhood um, specialists. So, so my role as the early childhood specialist is sort of all encompassing, but we also have um, an elementary math specialist, right, Jen Robitaille. So she's there as a resource. Um, we have um, Andrea Logan, who's our specialist around multi-tiered systems of support. So when we talk about modifications and accommodations, she's there. We work closely with CDS. They're there for support. Um, we have an elementary literacy specialist, D. She's there for support, right? So there's all these ways um, that we can continue to support. I think I said that word a lot in the last 30 seconds. Um, you know, your instruction of these materials. And it always cracks me up too, because, you know, you would never hear an adult say, oh, I'm not good at reading, right? Like if you're not a strong reader, that's not something that we often admit. But if you're not a strong or confident in your own math abilities, it's so common for us to say, oh God, I'm no good at math. Oh, put numbers on a page and, and you've lost me, right? I don't understand arithmetic. Um, or whatever, geometry, whatever it is. So it's just, it, but we really sort of have to overcome that um, stereotype, no, it's not a stereotype. I'm at a loss for words at the moment, but overcome that and, and just convince ourselves of the important, we know the importance of reading and convince ourselves of the importance of math and, it, and, and being confident in that, in your own skills, instructing it and your own skills, um, assessing it in students, et cetera. Um, the other thing I wanted to add that you were kind of reminded me of is, you know, a lot of the photos that I showed are, you know, they're using materials for math, but there's also a lot of activities in the program where they're using their bodies to do math. There's um, like a in unit six, things that grow, there's an activity, the people's garden or something like that. And I'm literally using them to create and sort a garden based on the colors that they're wearing. So, you know, and they loved that. And I had to do it every day for a week because they kept asking for it. Um, I had to sort them out and plant my garden and they just laughed the whole time. Um, and also mm -hmm. like I think there's a vegetable soup activity where they choose to be a vegetable and then they're counting on a number line and hopping into the salad. Oh, it's a salad, um, I think. And so I don't know, there's just, I like that kind of mind body math connection with them that's in the program as mm -hmm. well. So. Awesome. So any questions about that? Let's find out about it or math. 